Hey guys, this is Matt here with a new video. In this one, I wanted to go through the history of Apple laptops, how their design has changed, how their looks have changed, and how their internal specs have changed over time in terms of the RAM, the processor, their processor speeds, and the years in which they were released. So let us start with the Macintosh Portable which was released in 1989. It had quite low specs as compared to modern computers. The processor was a Motorola 68000. The RAM was just the one megabyte and the system software version was 6.0.4. After this one, there were a few other computers released and the most notable of which were the uh, Macintosh PowerBook series. The next most notable Macintosh to be released as a portable computer was the PowerBook 100. It was released in 1991. It had the same processor, just a little bit more of RAM, like 2 megabytes of RAM, and the system software was 7.0.1. Now you will notice that the all these Macs, including the Macintosh portable and the PowerBook 100, they had the trackball in there, not actual trackpads. Some of the power books that were released a little bit later had the option to switch to a trackpad instead of a trackball. But the main option uh, which you received when you purchased the computer was the trackball. So the next one that shows up here is the PowerBook 2400. This one was released in 1997. The CPU was the 603EV Power PC. But the main bump in terms of the specs was the RAM, that is 16 megabytes instead of 2 megabytes, and the macOS version was 7.6.1. You will notice that there is no trackball anymore. The trackball has been replaced by a trackpad, and there is no internal floppy drive, which is I think, quite revolutionary for a company computer of that year. Most computers at that time did have the floppy drive in included, the floppy drive internally, but this one came with an external floppy drive that you could add on. Again, Apple trying to be uh, innovative in terms of choosing the later input and output options and ditching those that were getting obsolete. Also, you will notice that the next one that we that is shown here is maybe one of the most iconic laptops ever made by Apple. It's the iBook. It has featured in quite a few movies since then and uh, this was released in 1999. Again, a PowerPC CPU or processor, the G3 750 and the RAM was 64 megabytes. Now, this one was released with Mac OS 8.6 and it's very popular in many movies in mainstream it's a very unique design a clamshell design and the the thing that uh, caught my attention the most is when the laptop was open the apple logo was upside down at the back you could see that in many videos when you looked at them online but this again revolutionary design by apple full color lcd trackpad with with a speaker clamshell design portability in a powerful computer there were quite a few ibooks in between uh, the next most notable one was the, the one released in 2002 with a power pc 750 fe with 128 megabytes of ram and with mac os 9.2.2 now this in my opinion is the time at which the computers uh, made by apple started going into the mainstream and started developing into what we would recognize as the modern uh, operating system that is being used right now by all Mac users. The dock appears, the internal layout of the icons and the system functions as well as the preferences and things that we recognize now as being part of everyday Mac OS usage. These started to appear in Mac OS 9. Not quite there yet but uh, starting to get there. And the PowerBook G4 was the one released in 2005. Again, a, a PowerPC CPU 7447B uh, G4, RAM 2 gigs, and Mac OS 10.4.2. If you look at the software that is running on this one, uh, it is getting a little bit closer again to what their software looks like today. The icons were changed from uh, Mac OS Mavericks to Mac OS Yosemite but the overall look and feel of the operating system is still the same since this old mac os version again two gigs of ram in a computer from 2005 that is pretty good uh, that was high end at the time the next one that, is, that i would like to sh go through here is the the plastic macbook now this one had sort of a mixed history uh, when it was released in the white color they had defects in terms of the sides uh, cracking over time and Apple did release a black version of his computer a little later with that crack uh, problem fixed 
uh, and I think it was part of a recall or a repair service offered by Apple for free when the cracks appeared on the computer owners would, were able to return it to the Apple store to get it repaired for free. Yeah, so this one was released in 2006 and you can see that it has started to use an Intel, an Intel processor, the Intel Core Duo um, from the year 2006. 2 gigs of RAM at the time and Mac OS 10.4.6 which is a fully modern operating system in its own right. Now the MacBook Air. Now this one was released in quite a dramatic fashion by Steve Jobs when he chose to get it out of a manila envelope on stage. We all remember when Steve Jobs released the first MacBook Air how people were awestruck at the design at the way it was slim and this was a special computer, a landmark computer. It would determine the direction of all Mac computers released after that date. Maybe not the MacBook Pro that was released around the same time, but most of the other computers that were developed as landmark computers or big major upgrades by Apple just after the release of this MacBook Air. Now this one had a Core 2 Duo CPU, 2 gigs of RAM and was running Mac OS 10.5.1. Now the next on this list is the MacBook Pro, again released in 2008 with a Core 2 Duo processor, 4 gigs of RAM and initially released with Mac OS 10.5.5. Now this one also was uh, demonstrated by Steve Jobs on the on the stage and as being built by from a single sheet of metal. Steve Jobs was a showman, he was able to make the most boring or mundane or technical things interesting for a massive audience and he decided at the time when he released this MacBook to bring a piece of metal to the stage a bare piece of metal that only showed that this Mac was made out of a single sheet of aluminium it was a feat of engineering it was something to be admired in 2008 that a computer could be made from a single piece of metal and it seems to have endured over the years. The single piece of metal design is still somewhat there in all the Macs that are sold to this day. And the shape of the Mac, like being a single metal base uh, with a, just a bottom cover that opens up and the hinges being screwed from the bottom up into the base is still present in all the modern Macs that are released nowadays as well. And when someone thinks of a MacBook, they think of this, uh, a MacBook Pro, they think of this computer before they think of anything else. At least this was the case for a few years before the release of the later versions that sort of made huge leaps in terms of the specs and the design. The next notable iteration of the MacBook Air was in 2012. Modern CPUs, the Intel Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM and Mac OS 10.7.4. But you will notice that it is slimmer than the original MacBook Air that uh, Steve Jobs got out of an envelope. Slimmer and more powerful. And uh, these had uh, more uh, higher resolution screens. They had the, of course, the upgraded software version running on there. And they were able to compete with the MacBook Pros of the time in terms of performance. These were not entry level machines anymore. They were given as many internal specs as could be found on the MacBook Pro, except for the Retina screen of course. The next leap forward is the MacBook Pro Retina that was released in 2012. Again, upgraded CPUs, up to 16 gigs of RAM, uh, running macOS 10.7.4. This computer was able to bring the Apple Retina display to a Mac. The first Apple phone, uh, I mean the first iPhone to have a Retina display was the iPhone 4, released a few years earlier and this release of the MacBook Pro in 2012 brought that Retina display to a Mac. These had much more beautiful displays com as compared to other laptops of the time. The next notable release, in my opinion, of the uh, MacBooks was the 2015 MacBook 12 inch. These had lower CPUs, the Intel Core M's, with 8 gigs of RAM and were initially running Mac OS Yosemite 10.10.2. Now you will find that this Mac was initially built to be an entry level Mac, a lower processor and no fan in there. But this computer had no internal fan, first of its kind in terms of the MacBook, but still lacking in the power that the MacBook Pros had at the time. However, it was still revolutionary in terms of the display being a retina display in a 12 inch machine and the keyboard being the first one 
that Apple released with the new key design, which meant that it had less key travel and a different metal doom design under each key as compared to the older keyboards of the earlier MacBook generations. And the final one that we will be looking at here is the MacBook Pro released in 2017. Now I haven't included the earlier MacBook Pro when it was released without the touch bar uh, because I did not think it was a huge, uh, it was a notable release to be talked about. But the one released in 2017 had the same design just with the addition of the touch bar on top. So the function keys on the top of the keyboard instead of having like the uh, dedicated brightness key, uh, F3, F4, the dedicated key for the backlight on the keyboard as well as the play, pause, forward and volume keys as well as the power button. They were all replaced by this touch bar on the top of the keyboard. This has an adaptive uh, display that changes according to the application that is being used at the time on, this on the main screen. Um, the power button is still there on the right but it doubles up as a fingerprint reader and can be used to, to register touch ID so that the computer can be unlocked without a password and with a fingerprint instead. Now this design, though controversial in many aspects, is still futuristic enough and has many more internal changes for it to warrant its own, uh, its own spec sheet right here. Uh, Intel i7 KB Lake, 16 gigs of RAM and released with Mac OS Sierra 10.12.5. The keys have the new metal dome designs, just like the earlier 12 inch MacBooks, but uh, these are the Gen 2 ones, which are supposed to have been upgraded since then to uh, make the keys feel clickier and to, the, to make the keys more solid, even though they are very shallow as compared to older Macs. And now these had the USB-C ports on each side, two on each side, each one of those ports could be used individually as the charging port, so no MagSafe anymore. And USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 was, was the standard, which allowed for many in external high-speed peripherals to be connected, uh, such as external GPUs if you wanted to go that route, or adapters for you to use your standard USB or HDMI or network cable. Now this one was released in 2017. We have just got into 2018 and usually the MacBooks are announced and released later on during the year. I do hope that Apple comes with more exciting hardware this year and I do hope to update this video with the new Apple releases in the future. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked the video. If you do, please click the like button at the bottom. Please consider subscribing to follow all my future video releases. Catch you in the next one.